but I was going to mention a number of things that are really important. And the first thing that I'm going to touch on is what happened at Fukushima regarding the second robot entering the Fukushima Unit 1 containment area. And of course, it got fried because they sent in a robot with normal uh, silicon integrated circuits, which you could expect the uh, electron uh, flux of high energy beta particle emissions and the gamma rays, which anneal the microchip, the silicon based microchip, would fry it within minutes. And of course, the number of cyberts per hour of radiation was so excessive, there's no way it would have survived. I think it was an on purpose situation. You send a robot in that you know is not hardened against radiation. And of course, this is to make certain that people realize yes, we, we can't do anything for 200 years. Well, I'm going to give here right now specific engineering and plasma physics to explain how we can get rid of isotopes also in the Pacific Ocean. And I'm going to go beyond Dr. Colonel uh, Bearden's patents, uh, which were published in the early 2000s, and uh, I'm going to give some specific technical details. Now, if you look at uh, Patter, uh, the Bearden patent, which I will give you links to, and it talks about the summary of his invention in terms of plasma physics, it goes back to the Society of the Bell, and which is basically using a plasma form of mercury uh, rotating in a uh, in a torsion field effect. Uh, the effect of gravity is to actually create a boundary zone, so the gravitons or Higgs field particles or the God particle creates a buoyancy effect against the object, and that's how you can lift objects by creating what's called a boundary zone. So the Higgs field gravitons will push against it, just like water molecules push against the hull of a large concrete or steel ship. Uh, the same effects work uh, in terms of the plasma subatomic particle physics of uh, destroying uh, radioisotopes. When the sun has a uh, coronal mass ejection before the CME occurs where the ultraviolet light is released first, then you get a burst of uh, ultraviolet light that rises in eight and a half minutes, but before that you get what's called a gravity wave. That gravity wave acts in hyperdimensional physics as faster than the speed of light and uh, it's basically what's called a disturbance in the time, time space, a constant of the time space coordinates so that the uh, time space is embedded in the Higgs field which is the field that creates wormholes, the event horizons and of course the black hole, supermassive black hole in the center of every galaxy and emerging from the, the black hole or white holes that emerge in the star so there's a literally a plasma field connection in hyperspace in the fifth dimension which is the research that's going on at the uh, Hadron Collider regarding the God particle trying to discern the embedding of time space in the hyperdimensional physical dimensional realm called the Higgs field. So looking at the uh, direction of, for dark energy and dark matter. Now I'm going to make this real simple uh, for those that want